my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy, sometimes Mouse, and I talk about books and book-related things, and today I am giving you my June wrap-up. As always, here are my disclaimers. Um, if you hear any animal sounds or anything, I live in a zoo and I don't have any control over them. Sorry in advance. I do try to edit those sounds out, but I'm not the best when it comes to audio mixing, and I feel like I lose quality when I try too hard to lose the sound of the bird occasionally so just fair warning on that um, if you are new here i do post every tuesday and thursday at 10 a.m central standard time and if that interests you you can go ahead and like and subscribe and turn the notification bell on and all those things that i'm supposed to tell you at the beginning and the end of a video anyway this is the june wrap-up june was our clear your shit mini readathon month i will say that this month was a little bit harder than last year's just because of my starting a new job and it making it very difficult for me to keep up with the readathon as well as my own reading as well as also my new the new job so full disclaimer on all of that i did read about what is now becoming a little bit of my average on a monthly basis and i'm quite pleased with the amount that i ended up reading it is a pretty solid um, number in my opinion. Not too high, not too low. Not that there is a too high or too low, but I feel like I'm reading just, I'm just slow enough that people maybe this year aren't going to accuse me of lying about how many books I've read by the end of the year. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes, right? Anyway, let me go ahead and get into the stats for you. This month I read a total of 22 books, which was 2,432 pages read and 153 hours and 34 minutes listened, which is about six days and nine hours. This is, a, like I said before, a little bit of the average of what's been going on the last couple of months, and I'm kind of surprised by the amount of books that I even managed to read to begin with this month just because of how busy this past month genuinely was with my friends coming over, with my starting the new job, with my many doctor's appointments and things to do. I uh, did not expect to read as much as I did. I actually expected to be less than 20, so this was kind of surprising to me overall. I read an average of 138.9 pages per day. I listened to an average of 5 hours, 53 minutes, and 9 seconds per day. I acquired a total of 4 books, which cost $32.88, and I checked out 10 library books. Two of the books that I read this month were rereads, and the average rating for this month was a 4.3 which is wild. That is an incredibly high average rating for me, and when I was going through the like top books and worst books, it was very hard to pick a book that I would class as like horrible because I didn't really read it, read anything that I felt was awful other than a book that I DNF'd, and I only DNF'd it because I was just bored and didn't care, which to me doesn't necessarily class the book as a horrible book. It just means that I personally didn't care enough to continue to read it, and so I wasn't going to continue to waste my time. I read of those books, 14 of them were audiobooks, six of them were physical books, which is a lot, a lot for me. Two of them were ebooks and two of them were graphic novels. I also, of those, read three books between the pages of 301 and 400 pages, two books between the pages, between pages 401 and 500 pages, um, two books that were between 101 and 200 pages, and one book that was between 201 and 300 pages. This is pretty average for me. This is not anything too shocking. I generally read between 300 and 400 pages as the bulk of my reading. That's the length that my attention span really likes and can tolerate. You know, of all of those books, 15 of them were adult, five of them were young adult, and two of them were middle grade. Impressive, if you ask me, as someone who's trying very hard to pick consciously pick more adult books than young adult books just as someone who inherently kind of leans towards more young adult books because of the writing style and gets incredibly frustrated by teenagers being teenagers it's been a little bit hard to pick those adult books over young adult books but i am finding that there is more and more books that are written in the pacing of young adult books but with adult characters and i'm really appreciative of that because i just don't have the attention span for a lot of like big old fantasy books with incredibly complex governmental systems. I know that a lot of people enjoy those books. I personally just 
don't. I don't have the capacity for them, especially with all of the other things that I have going on in life right now. I need quick pacing and things that don't require too much thinking unless we're talking about Shauna McGuire's books and then that's a whole other category and we'll get to that later. Now I am going to show you the my book blanket update. So enjoy that. She is getting large and it is very fun. It is very fun. I'm excited to see how big this is by the end of the year. I think it's going to cover my bed um, end to end and that'll be cool and it'll be like our first real blanket in the house when we when my husband and I move into it. So enjoy that. For this month's book blanket update, I have a total of three thrillers, seven fantasy, three romance, five horror, one sci-fi, and three non-fiction books. If you'll remember that nonfiction and my contemporary and historical, etc., all are in the same color. I have worked on the book blanket for a total of 48 hours now. The edges are back to what they were when I started, but still not correct. She is now bigger than a lap blanket, so it covers me from foot to a little bit over my hips, which is kind of cool. She's, she's quite large now. Now then for what I personally consider my favorite part of doing my wrap-ups, we are going to talk about my top five books of the month and then the worst book of the month. My top book of the month, and this is kind of not fair, but I did read it twice this month. Literally, I read it twice this month. It is my favorite book. I, I'm also currently in the process of defacing it, and I will include some of that footage shortly, but that book is going to be Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. Middle Game by Shauna McGuire is about Roger and Dodger, who are two twins that were created in an alchemical lab in order to manifest the doctrine, which was created by A. Uh, Deborah Baker, who was an alchemic al uh, alchemist. I can't really get in depth about the plot of the book because it really would ruin the book, but you have to you have to read it to understand. And I've read this book I think six times now, and I've enjoyed it every single time. When it came to defacing the book, the reason that I decided to do that was because I saw somebody else on TikTok do this whole thing where they go on a journey with a book and they take it with them and they film themselves with it and they were adding like pictures in the book of things in the book and then also like highlighting and drawing on the book and I thought that that was really cool. But what I really wanted to do was make sure that it was still legible and that was very important to me because I plan on reading this book again probably 10 more times, knowing me. This was also the first, uh, one of these rereads was also the first time that I had ever just simply read it physically. The very first time that I read Middle Game it was through the audiobook, and then the second time it was like a mix, the second through fifth times, it was like a mix of both audio and um, physical book because that's just kind of how I read most of my books. This was the first time that I only read it physically and that was kind of cool because I caught a few more phrases and a few more things that I feel like while I was listening I might have missed otherwise. Things that I definitely knew happened but I wasn't really fully processing the depth of which they happened and so it was kind of cool to be reading it with the intent of highlighting and marking it up and catch all of those little details. I also really enjoyed covering it fully in quotes. That was really fun for me and I'm excited to do the same thing to the next book, Seasonal Fears, which is also the second best book this month for me. Seasonal Fears made me really nervous. You've probably heard me talking about this multiple times. I actually plan on reading Seasonal Fears again in July <laughs> because of how much I enjoyed it though. Sequels make me nervous just because there's been a history of not so great sequels and Middle Game having been my favorite book made me even more nervous about reading Seasonal Fears and enjoying it. However, I did enjoy it a lot and 50% into the book I immediately was like whining to my husband about how much I wanted a physical copy even though I had an audiobook copy and an ebook copy. I wanted both of those things and the physical copy like once I got 50% in I was like no I need to have this in my library. So it was kind of cool that my husband then bought that book for me so I really really enjoyed seasonal fears. I enjoyed the new characters and I enjoyed when Roger and Dodger showed up from middle game and kind of how all of like what happened to them after middle game and it was kind of cool to get a, a peek into that. I want to know if there are going to be more books because there is another book in the middle grade series that ties into um, the middle game series and so I wonder if there is another book in this adult series. 
just based on that but I haven't seen anything announced and I didn't see anything online. I'm really hopeful that there is because I want more of this story. I want more of this world and I just enjoy it so much. It's kind of important to me I think at this point and I could not tell you why but I enjoyed Seasonal Fears a lot. I think that it's cool that it ties into the same world but could realistically stand on its own as a separate book and I think that that's hard to do and I think that Shonda McGuire did a fantastic job of it. The third best book that I read this month was Witchlings by Clarabel A. Ortega. This is a middle grade book that I actually own a physical copy of, shock, shock, awe, etc. And I honestly, this was one of the sweetest middle grade books I've ever read. I thought that the storyline and the representation was really fantastic and the way that they solved the problem and worked together and, you know, enemies to friends, that kind of thing in a middle grade book was really fantastic and I can't wait to recommend this to the kids in my life because I think that they'll really enjoy it. I also really appreciated the vivid descriptions of the world around them as well as the author's note in the end explaining where some of these inspirations came from within Clarabelle's own personal world. I thought that that was really cool and really well done and I think that it would be really cool for kids to read as well. I will say when I was a kid I never read the author's note and the only reason that I do now is because I usually am listening to the audiobook and so I just happen to catch the author's note before I end the book listening. <laughs> so I will say that but it is very cool to see the author's note um, at the end include that information and um, just kind of educate me. You know, I always am excited when a middle grade book manages to both be incredibly interesting and fun to read, but also educate me. The next book is These Deadly Games by Diana Urban. This is another book that I actually physically own, and I didn't expect this book to be one of my favorites this month. This was a gift from my friend Kaylin who gave me a big box of just gifts and um, she basically, or of books, and she just was basically like, I think you'll like this, but thriller, thrillers are like tough to decide on which is totally true, and young adult thrillers especially. I feel like a lot of the time when I'm reading a young adult thriller, I figured it out between, you know, 25 and 50 percent, or I still don't know the point of the story and I'm frustrated and I don't want to continue and I'm bored. This book, the pacing was fantastic. It hits the ground running, but the way that it um, ebbs and flows really works well, so that you're on the edge of your seat the whole time, but you don't feel over stimulated by the amount of like horrifying things that are happening. Like this is a really good thriller in that you're you're really fucking wondering what's going on. And every time that I thought I knew what was going on, I definitely didn't know, which was crazy. I really really enjoyed the way that the writing of this just put things into not necessarily perspective, but the way that the writing was handled and handled different mental illnesses and traumas and um, mental health things without making it feel like, oh, I just threw this in here so that I can get the represent representation clout, but I didn't really go into any of the detailing. The way that it was incorporated into the story really felt realistic to the story. It didn't feel like you just inserted it in and hoped that nobody would notice. Like, notice in a way that it was badly done. <laughs> um, so this was a really fantastic book. I had, you know, planned, like I do with most physical books, I had planned on reading it across four days, but I I had planned on reading it across four days, but I actually ended up finishing it, I think, in two days because of how much I was enjoying it and how much I didn't want to put it down. Then after that, we have Hide by Kirsten White. I've been on a little bit of a horror and thriller kick lately, and so this doesn't really surprise me that this was one of my top books. I didn't really know what to expect, though, when Art recommended that I read this book. This is a horror book, and I don't even know how to explain how it's a horror book. Now, I will say Kirsten White has the tendency to be too on the nose with certain things. Like, there are no subtleties in the way that Kristen Wright, White writes things and the um, real-life events that she definitely is referencing. So I will give that. There's some cult references that are just very, like, we know what you're referencing, Kirsten. This is not, you're not even trying. After the Guinevere deception pissed me off so badly, I was a little bit hesitant to read Kirsten's writing at all. But overall, it still ended up being something that I really, really enjoyed start to finish, and I was surprised by how interesting and fun and scary this horror book was. So if you really like horror, I would recommend this one to you just to give it a go. Uh, I've read a couple of Kirsten's other, like, scary books, and I think that she does a pretty good job of that, and maybe that's the genre she should, should stick more closely to rather than fantasy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, 
No one, no one come for me for that one. Anyway, the worst book of the month, <laughs> and mm -hmm. this one's tr tricky to talk about. The worst book of the month is The Book of Night by Holly Black. Why is it the worst book of the month? Now, I'm not going to say that it's because, oh, she just put some sex scenes in it, but it's just a YA book written as a, like, that they classed as adult because she put sex scenes in it. She didn't even try. I'm not going to say any of that because it's one been said and two, I don't actually agree. <laughs> I don't feel like this was a young adult book at all that just happened to get labeled as adult because of sex scenes. First off, there are more graphic sex scenes in young adult books looking at you, Sarah J. Mass like blatantly. And also even Holly Black's fade to black sex scenes are a little bit spicier than the sex scenes that are in the Book of Night. So I will, I will say all of that. However, the Book of Night felt like a true crime cop detective thriller-esque like book that was supposed to be gritty. Like an old school adult paperback you're following the cop as she tries to solve a crime situation. The main character is not a cop. She's a, a thief and all of that. But like, that's what it felt like. I don't know if that makes sense, like, to describe those two things together, but that's what it felt like. And it felt like it was trying really, really hard to be gritty, and it really wasn't gritty. I've read scarier and grittier things in young adult books. These Deadly Games is a fantastic example of something a little bit gritty. Like a lot gritty. A lot grittier, actually. <laughs> I just feel like Holly Black does a better job at dark fantasy rather than urban fantasy. I don't feel like urban fantasy is the correct term. I remember that being a conversation that happened a long time ago online, but I'm not... I tried to look into this before filming this video, but I couldn't... I couldn't find the conversations anymore and I wasn't sure the correct term to use, but... I mean fantasy within the modern realm. And I will say, I even when I was talking about this in my TBR, I knew that I would feel this way because Tithe, whatever it's called, where are they? I have those books somewhere. These guys. Can you see this? No. The Modern Fairy Tales by Holly Black. That is in the same realm as the Folk of the Air, Air, except that most of the focus is actually in the real world rather than the fairy world. And I did not enjoy these books as much because the real world nitty gritty part of it just felt silly. It felt silly to me and I did not enjoy that. And so that's basically the exact same vibe that the Book of Night has is, okay, but you should really stick to writing within the actual fairy realm. That is Holly Black's like gold pieces. Like that is what she excels at when it comes to writing and writing within the real world, the urban world, it just doesn't work well for her style of writing in my opinion. I just didn't enjoy it for that fact and I just didn't care about anybody in the books. The concept was really, really cool. The way that they dealt with shadows and used that magic to do different things. I thought that was very cool, but again, I just didn't care, and the attempt to make it super gritty felt very cheesy and lame. So that is why it is the worst book that of, of the month, but it was only a three star rating, so it really wasn't that negative. It, it wasn't unenjoyable, it just wasn't for me personally, if that makes sense. It just didn't do it for me. If I'm gonna read a gritty adult book, then it's gotta be real fucking dark, and this was not it, so. That's my personal opinion. Y'all might have a different opinion. I've mostly heard people complain about the fact that like it wasn't sexy enough and I don't personally feel like an adult book needs to be sexy to be an adult book. I actually heavily don't feel like a book needs to be sexy to be an adult book. I think that a lot of you guys might just need to be reading erotica rather than adult romance. I think that you can actually have adult romance without <laughs> sex. But that's a whole other conversation for another day. Anyway, that's my wrap up for June. I hope to see you guys again for my wrap up in July and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read some of these books and enjoyed them or didn't enjoy them as much as I did or if there were any stats or anything that was um, interesting to you. If you enjoyed this video, like I said in the beginning of the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share. If you didn't enjoy this video, let me know in the comments down below what I can do to make it better for you, unless it is about my opinion, in which case, um, that's... I'm not changing it, so <laughs> thanks. Uh, 
I will see you guys again on Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time and again on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Don't forget to take your meds, drink your water, and do something today to take care of yourselves. Okay, thanks, bye.